Many power station manufacturers offer expansion batteries for some of their power stations. Not all of them, but the bigger ones usually have an expansion battery port for their proprietary batteries. And the question that I have is, are they actually worth it? Now the first thing you may notice if you're looking at a power station and thinking about buying their expansion battery is that they're actually expensive. Even the one I have right here, which is the AFRI P280 with the AFRI 2048 watt hour expansion battery, isn't inexpensive. Though I have to admit, <laughs> AFRI's price at $509 and change for just over two kilowatts is less than a lot of them are out there today. I've seen similar battery sizes for about $1,000. So AFRI's is actually I think reasonably priced in that range. However, a lot of them offer extra ports and things, including solar inputs on the expansion battery. And maybe that's why they're so expensive because Afri's doesn't offer that. So the question is, is it really worth buying one of those? And so I want to explore that today and give you my thoughts on expansion batteries or proprietary expansion batteries and just adding your own. So let's get into it. The first thing about proprietary expansion batteries is that, frankly, they're easy, folks. With the AFRI, I was able to just take that expansion battery, which was at about 25% state of charge, plug it into the AFRI P280, turn everything on, connect up the AFRI to the wall and start charging. And even though the AFRI was at 100%, it just automatically began to charge up the expansion battery until it was 100%. So that's pretty nice. If you add your own either through the solar port or if you hack a cable and run it that way, the capabilities aren't quite the same. For example, when you add an expansion battery to a power station that's made by that company, the display on the power station is going to give you the total amount of hours that you could run with the expansion battery. But if you add your own, whether it's through the solar input or by hacking a cable, you're not gonna get that information. Of course, server rack batteries, golf cart batteries, a lot of batteries like that come with their own displays, and so you can figure it out. But it's obviously not quite the same as having the power station itself tell you how many hours you can run something. On top of that, they draw evenly between the main unit and the expansion batteries versus if you add, for example, say 10 kilowatt hours of server rack batteries to a power station by hacking the cable. Well, what can happen is even though you've paralleled the two and voltages of the onboard battery and the expansion batteries should all come down together, I've noticed that it's not always perfectly even. Typically, the power station begins to lose power a little bit faster than your additional batteries. Now, that's okay because when it reaches zero, it can still run until those batteries are also exhausted. And when they charge up, they do in fact charge those expansion batteries that you added yourself the same. So it does work. It works perfectly fine. And they're less expensive. For example, when I last looked at some server rack batteries that I've got, they ran about $870 for over five kilowatt hours of battery versus the just under $510 for the 2048 watt hours that the AFRI battery has. So dollar for dollar doing your own is actually less expensive, but it's just not as convenient because for one, you've got to take an expansion cable and either make your own or cut it apart and make it work with those batteries, that's not the same as just using the cable provided by the manufacturer to plug into their units. So for those looking for real convenience, battery expansions from the manufacturer are, I think, a good option. They're very easy. You buy the expansion battery, you plug in the cable, you're done. And in the case of the AFRI P280, you go from 2,048 watt hours to double that right away. Very simple, very easy. You just plug it in and away you go, you're done. So from a simplicity stake, the manufacturer's expansion batteries, yes, they're super easy, they work, 
they're reliable, they charge and discharge together, and some of the more expensive ones have a lot of extra features. In fact, somebody mentioned to me that on one that they had, they could just take the expansion battery and go run something in their kitchen off of it because it had an inverter. Now, I haven't seen one like that, but I don't doubt that they exist. I've seen several that have USB ports, that have solar inputs, all kinds of extra stuff, though they're more expensive. And it's really simple. The less features the expansion battery has, the less it's gonna cost you. And let's be honest, if you add your own battery, you make your own cable, you connect up the battery and everything else, well, it's not gonna have all those extra things either. Though you're not limited to the manufacturer's ports, you can actually just add your own, including solar and other things. But I've also noticed under testing that some of the battery expansion ports on various power stations are actually controlled through either a CAN bus or some other switch mechanism that does prevent them from working the way you would think. Because typically if you parallel two batteries and you put a charger on one, it's gonna charge them both. But I did notice that when you're using a standard profile for charging, for example, a 51.2 volt battery, and you have that connected up to like my Opus Mega 1, the Opus Mega 1 doesn't actually like that charge. It'll take it and it will charge up the main battery to a point, but when the charger sees that the expansion batteries are full, it quits. Versus if you plug in the power station and let it charge, it doesn't do that. It charges both just fine, but there are some little idiosyncrasies with those kinds of setups when you build them yourself. So if you're looking for something super simple and you don't mind spending a little bit more on it, the manufacturer's expansion batteries I think are worth it. I can take this Afri P280 with the expansion battery, put it in my garage, connect it up to a fridge. I don't have to hack any cables. I don't have to do anything else. It's going to run it just fine when the power goes out. And with over 4,000 watt hours, it's going to run it quite a while and it is expandable to over 10 kilowatt hours so that's the other thing that you get with those a lot of them you can expand to 10 12 24 or even greater with their batteries now of course if I hack the cable I could add my own 10 kilowatts of power but it has its little differences. It's less expensive, but you need to know a little bit more about running batteries and inverters and chargers and charge controllers and all those kind of things in order to do it. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you like to do everything yourself and save a bit of money, I don't think the manufacturer's expansion batteries are as good a deal for you unless you do like I plan on doing with the Afri and you take the cable and you open it up and parallel it to another battery. Now you have their expansion battery, which is communicating with the main unit, but you've got your own batteries connected as well, and that should work perfectly fine. Now with the Afri P280, it does have two 500 watt solar inputs, and so that does give you some other options, and a lot of the newer power stations are starting to do this. You could connect solar up to one port and quite likely connect a battery to the other. Now that battery is not going to get charged off the main unit, but it would give you an extended runtime. You could also take a golf cart battery and plug that into both ports and get a thousand watts of charging off the golf cart battery. But again, you're going to have to charge that golf cart battery separately versus if you just use their expansion battery. Well, guess what? You don't have to deal with any of that. You've got a thousand watts of solar. You can add solar to the unit. It's going to charge up all the batteries that you have. In conclusion, yes, manufacturers expansion batteries have a place. They're for those that are looking for simplicity, something easy. You drop $500 to $1,000 or more on expansion batteries, you plug them in and you're done and they run perfectly fine. Are they worth it? I think they are in certain circumstances and I hope that helps somebody out. Thanks to all my members. I really appreciate your support in my channel and Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you have a great 2026. I look forward to seeing you throughout the year. I've got lots more content coming, so stick around for that. Meanwhile, I'll throw another video right out here for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.